I created this presentation about the diagnosis and treatment of genital warts because genital warts are something that people do not like to discuss and many physicians are reluctant to treat. I am Dr. Judson Brandeis, a board certified urologist at Brandeis MD. We treat all of our patients with compassion and respect. Genital warts are caused by the human papillomavirus, HPV, is one of the most common sexually transmitted diseases in the United States. Every year in the US, approximately 14 million new affections occur. It's estimated by the Centers for Disease Control that there are almost 80 million Americans infected with HPV. These infections lead to 35,000 new cases of HPV-related cancers every year. There are multiple strains of this double-stranded DNA virus, but two basic types. Some strains do not cause cancer, and other strains potentially can cause cancer of the cervix, vagina, and anus. Warts commonly occur on the feet and hands and genitalia. Now the initial infection requires microtrauma of the epidermis or skin. The virus infects the basal cell layer and stimulates proliferation or growth of cells, resulting in soft, flesh-colored cauliflower clusters of warts. The diagnosis is typically made through visual inspection. Biopsies are performed for pigmented lesions or a lesion that is indurated, fixed, or not responding to treatment. When there's exposure to the human papillomavirus through an opening in the skin, the DNA from the virus enters skin cells. The HPV causes the infected skin cells to multiply and form warts. As the virus replicates, it sheds and is passed on to others. The incubation from the time of exposure to the time of clinical manifestation is approximately six to 10 months, but there's a range of one to 24 months. Genital HPV can be transient and subclinical and one out of five warts spontaneously regresses. However, the virus persists after treatment and recurrence after treatment is common, occurring in two out of every three cases. In patients who are immunosuppressed, there is an increased risk of infection and cancer. There are a number of treatment options for HPV-associated genital warts. Topical medications tend to be a first-line treatment. One option is trichloroacetic acid or bichloroacetic acid which is applied once every one to two weeks and works to kill warts through coagulation of proteins. Another topical option is Podophylox 0.5% applied twice a day for three days, followed by four days off the medication for up to four cycles. Podophylox is a plant resin that works by arresting mitosis or cell division and causes tissue necrosis Clearance rates vary around 50%. Extended exposure is irritating, so patients are encouraged to wash the medication off the skin one to four hours after application. Another option is Sinacatech, 50% ointment, which is used topically three times a day for up to 16 weeks. This is a water extract of leaves of green tea. The medication works by decreasing viral replication through upregulation of apoptosis associated modulation of genes involved in the pro inflammatory response to HPV infection. Now, another class of topical medications are immune modulators. Amiquimod, also called Aldera, works by stimulating the innate and acquired immune responses, which ultimately lead to inflammatory cell infiltration within the field of drug application followed by apoptosis of diseased tissue. There are two options. First, amiquimod 3.75% cream every night for 16 weeks, or a higher dose of 5% cream three times a week at night for 16 weeks. There is a 25% clearance rate at 16 weeks with side effects including pain, itching, irritation, redness, bleeding, and discharge. The cost of this medication tends to be significantly higher than the other medications. A critically important tool in the prevention and treatment of HPV 
are vaccinations. Two brands include Gardasil and Cervarix. Vaccination is recommended for females aged 13 to 26 and men aged 13 to 21. As you can see from the graph, when vaccination was introduced in Australia, the rates of HPV declined significantly in women less than 30 years old who were given the catch-up vaccine, but did not decline in women over the age of 30 who were not given the vaccine. Now, cryotherapy is an excellent tool to destroy genital warts by freezing them with liquid nitrogen. The tissue is frozen with liquid nitrogen and then allowed to thaw and then frozen again if necessary. The size and thickness of warts determine the number and length of the freeze-thaw cycles and up to three treatments may be required. Cryotherapy is not painful, but patients may experience mild to moderate burning sensation during the treatment. Sometimes warts occur in the urethra, which requires more extensive treatment. Recovery time from cryotherapy depends on the location and number of warts removed, but healing usually occurs in one to three weeks. After treatment, the penis may be irritated, sore, or mildly painful. There may be some swelling and shedding of dead tissue with resultant sores or blisters. It's important to call your physician for a fever over 101 degrees, significant bleeding, infectious discharge, or worsening pain. It is necessary to avoid intercourse until the treated area heals and the soreness is completely gone. After treatment, patients should avoid sexual intercourse for approximately one to three weeks, which is typically when the area is healed and the soreness is gone. Cryotherapy is ultimately successful in about 90% of cases, but more than one treatment may be required since the treatment may not cure or completely eradicate the human papillomavirus infection. The virus may remain in the body in an inactive state after the warts are removed. There are few complications after cryotherapy, except for some slight scarring, depending on how extensive the cryotherapy was. Now for those patients who have failed cryotherapy and topical treatments, laser therapy can be effective. But one of the dangers of using a laser is that the smoke plume can spread HPV. And so it's important that doctors and patients use a respirator or ventilator. Laser treatment, because of the cost of the laser, tends to be more expensive than the other treatment methods. Also, there's concern that laser treatment may increase the risk of having warts return by destroying the local immune system, which allows inactive viruses to become active. Once again, treating warts does not cure the human papillomavirus, and the virus may remain in the body in an inactive state after the warts are removed. A person treated for warts may still be able to spread the infection. However, latex condoms may help reduce the risk of spread. For large warts, or when patients fail topical and local treatments, surgical excision with either electrocautery or a scalpel may be required. In conclusion, the human papillomavirus is a common sexually transmitted disease caused by a virus. There are vaccines for pathologic HPV strains that are now available, which have been shown to reduce the population-based risk for HPV. HPV can cause cancer in women, and there's a high rate of recurrence after treatment. The incubation period after exposure can be up to and above one year. Topical treatment is available, Cryotherapy is a second-line treatment, and laser therapy, electrocautery, and surgical excision is a third line. However, third-line treatments tend to be more expensive and leave a scar. Thank you for watching this presentation on HPV-induced genital warts. At Brandeis MD, we are experts at evaluating and treating genital warts and would be happy to see you in consultation and treatment. Our website is BrandeisMD.com and our phone number is 925-255-7867. Please contact us at appointments at BrandeisMD.com. Our discreet and comfortable office is located at 100 Park Place, Suite 140 in San Ramon, California.